Awesome, cool. Um, so as Andrea mentioned, my name is Anjana. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm an engineering manager at Twitter. So I'm here to talk about my journey, uh, my role at Twitter, uh, a little bit about Twitter as well, uh, lessons I've learned along the way. And of course, the main important thing is answer any questions you might have at the end. So a little bit about me. Um, I was born and raised in India. Uh, my mother uh, studied economics, uh, but was later a stay-at-home mom. My father has his own um, small company, which deals with electronic instruments. Growing up, I'd say like I had a lot of hobbies. Um, you know, I used to paint, uh, sing, play the piano, tennis as well. Over time, I quit all my hobbies and you know just focused on academics. In retrospect, that was probably a mistake. I really wish I'd stuck to at least one hobby throughout uh, my life. So uh, after that, you know, after school, I did my undergrad in electrical engineering. So I want to give a quick background about how I went about choosing my major. Um, so for me, I didn't think too much about it. I was good at math and science, so engineering seemed like the obvious path for me. Uh, if you are wondering what your major should be uh, or what job you want to have, um, I'd suggest you draw a table with three columns, um, skills, passion, and opportunity. Um, and I would highly suggest you rate each of your options that you're debating in your heads, right, on these three categories. And definitely place more weightage on passion. The reason I say this is uh, in today's world, like skills can be learned from a laptop, right? So you can um, Google anything and you can learn more about it. So skills can be acquired and opportunities can be sought out. There are so many platforms available as well, like social media platforms available to get the opportunities, right opportunities. So definitely focus on your passion. Um, and a lot has changed since I graduated, which is why I'm saying like, you know, your options are endless in the world we live in. So um, you can absolutely do anything you want to. Um, and after my undergrad, uh, I did my master's and I graduated in uh, 2014 with a degree in electrical engineering as well. Um, as you can see, my journey has its ups and downs. Um, you know, I'll go through some of it in detail um, at a later stage. Um, so I mentioned I majored in electrical engineering, but as you um, can see, I am currently a software engineering manager. So how did I get into software? And I think this is where um, I'd like to talk about this. So where there was an opportunity for me to intern um, as a software engineer for Goldman Sachs, which is an investment bank. I didn't know anything about finance, uh, nor software engineering, uh, because I hadn't taken too many classes on it, because uh, I focused all my studying on hardware engineering. So software is completely new to me. So clearly this was out of my comfort zone. Um, and that is... Um, that is key to note as well. I thought of saying no so many times because I didn't want to fail as well as I was unsure if this is the right fit for me. Would I like it? Would I not? Would I be good at it? So many questions in my head, but I decided to say yes instead because um, what's the worst that can happen, right? I might hate it. I might be really bad at it. Then at least I know, at least I can strike something off my list saying that I'm not good at it or I didn't like it. And I think that's a very important thing to um, note as well as you just try new things, right? So this happened twice to me, both for my first job as well as for Twitter. Uh, I've never worked at a scale of Twitter, right? So uh, if, you were, if you're all familiar with what Twitter is, um, it's a social media uh, platform where people can post 280 characters um, lines, right? So it can be about your life, it can be about what you did today, but it can also be about politics, about um, anything um, you wanna talk about, right? Um, and it's, we serve like billions of queries per second. And for me, like the unknown was always scary, but the way I saw it was I can, the only way to overcome the unknown and all the fears that I had is actually to just say yes and take the job and see what happens. Um, and I want to emphasize that in the world we live in, it's easy to get the knowledge in any field via the internet. For example, if I want to become, if I want to drop my job and become a yoga instructor or a product manager, there's so many resources available on the internet. And with practice and passion for any new field, it's, it's possible to gain the skills get good at it, as well as even land a job in that field, right? So if you're worried about whether or not you made the right decision or you're making the right decision, the only way to find out is by actually making the decision. So just go for it. And you can always back out on your decision, go back on it. Um, so you have to believe there will be other opportunities. So what do I do exactly as a an engineering manager, right? So uh, when people think about Twitter, there's there's a lot to it. There's an application that is on your phone, right? Similar to any other application that you might have, like such as Zoom. Um, so, and there are 
here's, I want to first explain what my team does. So say you create a Twitter account. The first thing you're going to do on Twitter is to register yourself, right? You might give your name, your email address. After that, say your friend has also done the same thing, created an account and you want to follow your friend, right? And your friend follows you back. And then your friend tweets about their day, you know, tweets about how this is an amazing day and you like it, right? You, or maybe post a picture of the two of you, that's cool. And then you favorite it. That's what we call it. So favorite is what we call um, a like in Twitter or you retweet it. You want to share it with your followers as well. Um, so all of these user to user relationships, which is your friend following you, you following your friend, as well as user to tweet relationships, like liking tweets or retweeting a tweet. These are called graph relationships. And um, it's sort of like a spider web. You can imagine like to be a node, which is you, and you, you know, you can take many actions on Twitter. You can like something, you can block someone, um, you can follow someone, you can do so many things, right? And my team stores and serves all of these relationships. So that's what my team does. Um, so it's sort of a critical part of Twitter. So um, it is completely in the storage layer. And I manage eight engineers in London. So let's talk about what a manager does. So on the left, you see the roles or like I, I would call them, um, you know, all the people involved in a product, right? So when you think about Twitter as a product, there is um, a product manager, an engineering manager, and perhaps an engineering lead to actually see the product um, live on an app, right? So I handle, in my role, I handle both the product manager side as well as the engineering manager side, which is creating the story of what, what we're building and why we're building as well as who from my team is best placed to work on it, right? Who has the most expertise to work on that feature that I want. Then I work closely with my engineering lead who helps me with the story of how to implement it. So to give you an example, so say we want to have a feature to actually create a tweet. So I come up with, okay, you know what? Seems like users want to create a tweet or users want to follow each other because they want to build a sense of community on Twitter. So that's what we want to do. And the reason is because we want to build a community. And my engineering lead says, okay, I know how to build it. I think here's all the systems we need. Here's the architecture, right? So that's how these roles fit in together. So a day in my life definitely encompasses a lot of meetings. Um, so these meetings involve checking in with my directs to ensure they're not blocked and they're doing okay. This is similar to how your teacher might check in on you, you know, or your parents might check in on you for your homework, just to see, make sure that you don't need the help, like you're okay, right? Uh, and then planning is the next big one. So it's to figure out what has to be done when, as well as by when, because in the world we live in, I can't, um, we have only a limited amount of money for a certain feature, right? I can't say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to start working on this feature, but I'm not going to tell you when it's going to be out, right? That's not how it works. We need to also promise our customers when it'll be out. So that's a big one. Um, and then engaging with stakeholders, which I already spoke about, you know, um, the engineering lead as well. And the key is unblocking people. So the key is for me to make, make sure that all my directs are happy. They don't need my help and they are comfortable with what they have on their load, right? Um, the next one is managing up. So say you're doing really well at school. So you're up for an award. So your teacher has to sort of tell the principal or like tell whoever the head um, head of the school is to say, hey, you know what? I think this person has to be nominated for this award. So it's sort of your work, all your good work that you're doing has to be relayed over to upper management so that you get the credit you deserve as well as the team is benefiting from it. And last but not the least, asking the right questions. Um, and I would say that for anyone, right? And it works very well for a manager as well. Because as a manager, I may not be as good at um, coding as my actual directs who are doing it day in and day out, right? I might be a little uh, a step away from it. So I find myself in situations where I need to make a decision with very minimal information. So in those times, asking the right questions is what helps me uh, make those decisions. So there's, a, there's an article um, that... Um, I think Bronwyn has already pinged on the chat. So um, this is an article if you want to read more about one of our senior engineering managers talking about um, her day in Twitter. So now, how does one become an engineering manager, right? So there are two parts in engineering, software engineering specifically. If you want to stay hands-on coding and technical leadership, you can go the route of technical lead and domain experts, the one you see on top. If you want to manage people, projects, and perhaps teams of teams someday, then you the manager track is more relevant for you. As you can see, the starting point to both parts is a software engineer. So let's talk about what it, what does it take to become a software engineer? And if you're wondering, hey, I, I would love to code or like build these cool products someday. How do you do that, right? Um, I already touched upon how with the internet, today we can literally pick up any skill. 
A software engineer's main job is to code software and build products or platforms. I can go into the differences between products and platforms in our Q&A if you're interested. Um, and what it takes is lots of practice and engaging with the community to keep up and learn. The reason for this is technology changes so quickly. Every six months we have new libraries, new languages, new versions of languages coming in. So it, it can be a challenge to keep up. But once you get into the habit, it's, it's sort of easy. Um, so I'm going to share a few resources in the next slide. Um, feel free to take a screenshot if you want, I'm comfortable with that. Um, yeah, so first things first, like figure out what about software engineering excites you. Like Google, what are the types of software engineering? You can come up to backend, frontend. You can also look at other roles, site reliability engineering, solutions engineering. I'm happy to go into all of this in detail as well in Q&A if you want to know more about what each of those roles have and you can figure out if your um, what you like fits in with that. Um, you don't necessarily have to code 100% of your time, by the way. That's what I mean to say. Like a solutions engineering involves sales as well as a little bit of coding. So there's a lot of options here. Um, cool. So then here's a um, set of useful skills. So there's there's a few uh, free coding uh, boot camps. So for example, Free Code Camp and Khan, Khan Academy are catered towards school students to learn to coding as well. So it's, it's a very good way to start. And um, there's also like Code First Girls where you, you know, when you start a university, you can go for free evening classes if you want. And Meetup and Twitter are both very important for building a community as well as joining other other people who are probably learning along with you, right? And the last one is hackathons. Hackathons are a great way to meet beginners who are also um, learning to code, as well as some experienced people who can tell you how, how can you uh, produce something quickly within a day, right? That's what a hackathon is. It's usually a time boxed event. So one to two days and you sort of go in, you hack at something, you code something, you come up with a product, right? And then I've listed some soft skills as well, which you will gain automatically by school. I'm sure all of you already, you know, have some of these skills, which is it could be communicating with your teachers, with uh, giving presentations like this, as well as organizational skills that will happen automatically. The last one is practice empathy, because in, in the real world, you need to work with people. You need to be empathetic to other people. You need to be kind. You, you need to understand where the other person is coming from. Right. And that's important. So I'd say definitely think about those things as well. So what's it like working at Twitter? The first thing I want to say is like the work-life balance is so seamless to find at Twitter compared to, you know, the previous company I worked at uh, without, I just didn't even have to try hard to find it. Um, and then I would say it's the people. Um, people are empathetic, kind, and always willing to help each other and sort of assume the best intentions of the other person, which is so important because, you know, uh, there are different kinds of people. And I think Twitter is just uh, people who all like trust you so much and who believe that you have the best intention at heart, which is great. Um, and the other one to note is we have a lot of events where we collaborate, we communicate, we sort of um, come together to discuss and brainstorm and learn more, and which I think is important as well. Um, yeah, so this is again, feel free to screenshot this slide if you need to. There's an internship um program for undergraduate and graduate students it's usually starts around september and closes by march of the year so for example for 2021 internships the applications co close by march um so yeah definitely check it out if not for 2021 if you're interested in 2022 2023 i'm sure we'll have uh positions internships open so this is again a set of useful links i think you've already been sent this um, and oh you will be sent it so don't worry about it you'll have it with you for you. Um, so yeah, I just want to recap a few things that we've um, touched upon in this as well as things that I wish I'd known before as well, that there's not the first one is there's not one set path or career. If you're not sure what you want to do, that's okay. Just choose one thing, right? Try to do it well, try to give it your best shot. And if you don't like it, if you know, it, um, it's not a thing for you, you'll find something else. Trust me. Um, and the second one is embrace your highs and lows. Take your time. Um, different people peak at different stages of their life and I want to hit upon it, right? So I um, I was in the best like student at school or, you know, I, I, it's not always that you need to be the best at something. It's like different people peak at different stages of your life, right? Um, it could be college. It could be unis when you peak. It could be your first job. It could be your second job. It could be, there are so many stages in your life. So don't worry about um, when you peak, right? It, it just happens for different people at different times. Um, yeah, and that just gets me to the next point, just embrace change as a whole. Um, 
and yeah, I th- I'm sure if 2020 has taught us one thing, it's probably just being comfortable with the uncertainty and the changes that come along um, because there's a lot of things you can't control. So I'd say spend your time focusing on what you can control and the rest don't try not to worry about it. Um, and the last one is like, ask for help. Uh, um, I wish I'd done that more early on in my life as well. Like reach out to your teachers, um, you know, reach out to you. You're already part of wonderful um, organizations like this, you know, where you're able to listen to other people talk as well. So just ensure you're engaging the community and you're sort of building that community of peers and uh, people around you. Um, and yeah, and the last two points, so definitely stick to your hobbies. You'll never know when you might come to it or there might be something you escape to or look forward to. Um, and it might help you when you least expect it to. Um, yeah, and definitely stay curious, continue learning. That's a very important one. You're all here today, which already shows that, you know, you're curious to learn about what different people do and keep that going um, at any stage in your life. Always be curious to learn.